Hello and welcome to another Filter Great tutorial. My name is Layden and in this quick video I'll be showing you how to create custom keyboard shortcuts in Adobe Premiere Pro to help speed up your workflow with a layout specific to your editing style. If you're not already familiar with keyboard shortcuts, they essentially replace actions that would normally be a series of mouse clicks with one simple keystroke. For example, instead of navigating over to the toolbar, selecting the razor tool and cutting a clip, you can simply hit the C button to bring up the razor tool, cut, then hit V to return to the selection tool. Now Premiere already has keyboard shortcuts created and you can see all of them by hitting Command Option K if you're on a Mac, or go up to the top of the screen, hit Premiere Pro and go down to keyboard shortcuts. And if you're on Windows, you can go under edit and click on keyboard shortcuts. And the screen may look different depending on what version of Premiere you have. And again, if you're on a Mac or a PC. However, these shortcuts aren't exactly organized in a specific way to your editing style or laid out for maximum efficiency. What most editors like to do is organize as many of the relevant shortcuts under one hand. And that depends on whether you are right or left handed. And if you prefer all your shortcuts to be on the left hand or right hand side of the keyboard. I like to have all my most used shortcuts on the left hand side and more specifically on the lower section of my keyboard so that my thumb can always rest in the space bar while the rest of my fingers can reach all the more important keyboard shortcuts. Alright so here's a little project I have going here in Premiere. It's got a lot of video clips, a couple audio clips. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own custom keyboard shortcuts. I'll be adding keyboard shortcuts specific to my editing style and how I want things laid out. By no means is my way or process the right way of doing things. It all depends on your own editing style and how you like to edit and where you want your keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm on a Mac so I'm going to go up to the top and click Premiere Pro CC and then under that there's keyboard shortcuts. Now a similar screen comes up if you're on Windows, you may not have this entire keyboard layout, but all the same elements are there. So the first thing I want to do is up here under keyboard layout preset, I want to go under custom so I can create a new one if I want to go back if someone else is editing with me and they're used to the default settings, I can just click back and forth to my own preset. So down here at the bottom of the window you can already see all these different shortcuts and the first one I want to edit is add another delete key. So I'm going to type in delete and right here you have clear which is forward delete. I'm going to click on it and to the right there's an invisible text box you can add and once clicked on it I'm going to press X. So I want X to be my new delete key. I'm not going to get rid of the forward delete. So now whenever I hit the X button it's going to delete. So I can then hit OK and now if I don't like this clip I'll select it. I press X and there it goes. So like I said, I want all my most important keyboard shortcuts to be close to the spacebar. That way my thumb can stay on the spacebar while my other fingers can hit any other shortcuts. So the next keyboard shortcut I want to create is the Z key. I want to make ripple delete. So what ripple delete does is it will not only delete the clip, but it will slide all the other clips after it down and snap into the timeline. So I want to type in ripple delete. Now if I scroll down to the bottom here, it says timeline panel ripple delete. This is the one I want to add. In the past, I've hit option delete but it's really inconvenient. That's a two-handed shortcut that's not really practical at all. So I'm gonna change that to Z. And like we saw before, this little warning sign pops up saying that it's already being used. And by hitting OK, you're overriding this. But I don't really use Z as the zoom tool at all, so this is not really a problem for me. Just make sure you know what you're doing before you overwrite or get rid of a keyboard shortcut, because you might leave yourself really confused and not understanding why you can't do certain actions. So again, I'm gonna hit OK. And now I can hit C for the razor tool, cut, and then hit Z. And that ripple deletes that clip, got rid of it, and moved all these other clips here down to the left and snapped into my timeline. So that way it plays nicely. So now my main four keyboard shortcuts are just above my spacebar being Z, X, C, and V. Now C and V I'm going to leave because those are just what I've gotten used to and they're already in a pretty good spot. C being the razor tool and then V being the selection tool. Now another one of my favorite shortcuts is the A key which is track selection to the right. Now what this does is clicks on everything to the right of where your mouse is and you can move that wherever you want. So that's in a pretty good spot and I'm happy with that but I'm going to utilize the keys around it making the next row of keys useful to me and again keeping it under my left hand for much faster editing. Back up we go keyboard shortcuts. Now for this one I want to change the S key which is currently snap but I really can't say that I've used it enough to really leave it. So I'm going to type in nest right here and then click on the invisible text box hit S tells me it's already snap, I don't care, hit OK. So now I can just highlight these two clips, hit S, and they're nested. This process is normally much longer, you have to right click, scroll down, nest, and that's just too much for me. I personally like to do a lot of effects and kind of overlaying layers and masking, and oftentimes it's helpful to nest clips. So again, for me personally, this is a really great tool, but may not work for you. So moving down on the same row, I wanna change the D key. I wanna change this to be able to unlink clips. 
So the unlink feature is actually just link or command L. And this is just a toggle function. As you can see, it's command L and that's just on the right hand side. It really doesn't work for me. Click, let's make it D. It's already in use. Again, really don't care. I don't use it anyway. Okay. Now what unlink does is whenever I click on this clip, these two by default, the audio and video are connected. So if I move that, you can see the video and audio clip comes together. But if I hit D now, it separates them. So I can move the audio out of here get rid of it completely, or maybe for some reason it's off time, I can readjust it and have the audio start just before the clip. And my first line of keyboard shortcut set being ZXCV, second line set ASD, and now I wanna finish off with the top line, now, I'm already a pretty big fan of Q and W, which is another ripple delete function, except you don't actually have to use the razor tool and cut, it will just cut for you. Now hitting Q will delete everything to the left and bring everything to the right over, and then W will cut whatever to the right and bring everything to the right over. So if I hit W, just that right part of that clip gets cut up to where the audio is. And if I hit Q, it deletes everything to the left of it and brings it down and snaps into the timeline. So these shortcuts are in pretty good position for me. I like them, I've gotten used to them. Now the next one over is E, which I don't really use at all, but I know R is the retime time interpolation tool. So when I hit R, I can actually stretch out the length of a clip. This is helpful because I do a lot of speed ramping or a lot of slow-mo video. It doesn't really require an absolute percentage for the video. But as you can see, when I hover over this clip, it pops up there saying 55.04%. So it's playing at just about half speed. Now it would be great if I could be more specific with that. So I'm gonna change E to the retime editor where the window pops up and I can actually input a specific value. So here we go again, up to my keyboard shortcuts. Make sure you're still set on custom here. So this keyboard shortcut, I'm gonna search up speed which is the speed and duration window that pops up whenever you hit command R. Now again, I don't want to take my thumb off that spacebar, and I'm not a huge fan of the two key keystroke shortcuts. So for this one, beside it, I'm gonna hit E. E again is already being used, but I don't really use E to begin with. And again, I'm not deleting the current shortcut, just in case I forget or subconsciously I hit command R. Or as I mentioned before, if you're editing with multiple people and they're used to the default controls, this is good. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now I can just hit E and up pops my clip speed duration window. I can input 50%, I can reverse speed, I can make all the regular speed adjustments here if I want to. Hit OK and there you go. Again, I'm just trying to avoid right click, scroll down, and clicking speed duration. All these shortcuts about saving time and creating a workspace that works well for you. And finally, the last thing I want to mention is that you should save this preset and name it just to make sure you always have it and never lose it. Give it a name, hit OK. So now you have it saved along with all your other defaults. And there you have it. And don't forget to check out filtergrade.com for the best Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, Capture One styles, and video LUTs.